Broadcasting from Sydney, Australia, this is Front and Centre with Emilio Garcia. Brought to you by TheUnshackled.net. El Che Guevara, the homophobic and racist murderer that has become a beacon for the anti-racism gay rights youth that honour him with t-shirts with 145% profit margins sold by capitalist companies. In this sense, El Che is more a symbol of irony than a symbol of rebellion and communism. Somewhere between the claims that El Che was enlightened and revolutionary, and the claims that he was worse than Hitler, lies the truth. We'll be exploring that truth today on Front and Center. Hello and welcome to Front and Center. I'm Emilio Garcia. Thank you so much for being with us. On today's episode, we're talking about El Che Guevara and how so many, especially in our youth, see him as a symbol of hope. Now, this being a centrist podcast, my aim is generally to show both sides of the coin. But sometimes there are certain subjects that are objectionable and it's hard to show the positive side of something and a murderous psychopath such as il che guevara seems to be one of those subjects this podcast is going to focus not so much on the actual history of el che but more on who he was as a person and also on why he's revered this is why the podcast will be divided in two parts the first part will be the legacy of El Che, followed by why he is revered by so many in today's society. We'll be exploring all of this right after this short break. I'd like to take a second and ask you to go to theunshackled.net and download your free ebook, The Unshackled Battlefield. Learn about the founding principles of The Unshackled and what made the organization what it is today. And since I have you, don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you, and now back to the show. Welcome back to Front and Center. I'm Emilio Garcia. On today's episode, we're talking about El Che Guevara. I think a good place to start is not really his motorcycle trip or where he uh, grew up, uh, his medical degree, nothing like that. I think the best place to start is when he gains some authority right after the Cuban Revolution. After Batista is overthrown, El Che is put in charge of the Cabana prison. Che Guevara was instructed to round up and deal with former Batista officials. Che Guevara organized hundreds of trials and put to death possibly 500 or even more uh, Batista supporters. El Che dutifully followed Fidel Castro's orders to murder political opposition. The claim was that they would only charge people with several counts of murder and only execute those people. But it is believed that El Che went far beyond that. Hundreds, some say thousands of people are executed by firing squad. The killings help cement Che's terrifying reputation. Both of them, they are killers, they are murderers. Castro has killed thousands of people and Che Guevara has killed thousands of people too. So Che was a devil. Along with the guilty, some claim that many innocent men are also executed. This, however, was not El Che's most destructive moment. When he was promoted to relevant political status, El Che, alongside Fidel Castro, turned Cuba into a brutal dictatorship. Fidel Castro took power, promising to hold free elections and that he would not seize any property or means of production. Both of these claims turned out to be nothing but lies. Castro, always when he was in the mountains, he promised a election, free election in 18 months. There is not communism or Marxism in our ideas. We will not seize any land from anybody. Yet on February 16th, just two months after the rebels' victory, Fidel Castro was sworn in as prime minister, and the elections never take place. The government begins to prepare for Cuba's agrarian reform law, which calls for the seizure of private property. Che is given an important new role in the Cuban government as head of the industrialization department and is appointed president of Cuba's National Bank. The capitalist structure of Cuba is coming to an end. Castro, he decreased the standard of living. So instead of making richer everybody, he made poor everybody. Fidel Castro signs an agrarian reform bill. And on May 7, 1959, the first seizures of large agricultural land holdings are made. Any form of artistic, political, or even religious expression were a threat to the Che's ideals and began to be repressed in extreme and brutal ways. Any opposition to the regime is viewed as counter-revolutionary 
and a crime. Even the practice of religion is frowned upon. Several dozen Catholic priests are expelled from the island. I'll skip the geopolitical issues that Cuba was involved in when it comes to the Soviet Union, the Missile Crisis, because the story is long and complex. And what we're trying to look at is El Che Guevara and the legacy that he left in Cuba and the ideas that he held. What cannot be understated is the enormous repression that was being felt in Cuba with Fidel and El Che in power. People were murdered daily, forced to work for miserable wages or forced to work as slaves. And Cubans began to flee the island, many of them dying in the process. The legacy of El Che Guevara can still be seen today. In Cuba, even after El Che's death, people have been oppressed, repressed, and murdered. In fact, one of the most awful things that we've seen in Cuba is the way that people were treated when AIDS started to affect the country. People with AIDS started being taken to jail, even if they had never infected anybody else. The Che Guevara was a dictator and a murderer. He repressed the voices of anyone who opposed him. Him and Fidel killed those who would attempt to flee. They took part in seizing property and means of production of all their people after they promised that they would do no such thing. The question is, why is he a hero to so many, especially to the youth, to the millennials? Why do so many hold him in high historical esteem as some kind of hero? We'll be looking at those issues after this short break. Are you looking to improve your smile? Who isn't? A bright white set of teeth is something many covet, but few have. Now you can be one of those few with Hackner Cruise's activated charcoal tooth whitening powder. Made from premium bamboo and 100% natural ingredients, you'll see a whiter, brighter smile in as few as two days. Find out why the ancient Chinese called activated charcoal the black diamond today at hacknercruise.com. Again, that's H-A-C-K-N-E-R-C-R-U-Z.com. Thanks, and now back to the show. Welcome back to Front and Center. I'm Emilio Garcia. We just went over a brief overview of Che's work in Cuba, not at a geopolitical scale, but when it relates to how he treated the people of Cuba. Now, anyone that would take an objective view at Che's histories and attitudes would probably have less than a favorable view of him but many still revere him as some kind of hero. So what do you think about this guy? Che Guevara? Yeah. What do I think about him? Yeah. I mean, I like him, but I don't know everything about him. I mean... He's been labeled as a homophobe, as someone who hated blacks, despite the fact that he stood up for black Americans and the Black Panthers and people like that, and the civil rights movement. His actions were never out of hate or a lust for power, as it has been suggested by his detractors, but from love for the world's people and a desperate desire within him to see them free from the tyranny of dictatorships of the rich. He gave his life for the dispossessed, the exploited. People who defend him seem to be part of what I call the SJW crowd, a group that is defined by the virtuous intention of ending racism, sexism, and homophobia, but are too tragically misinformed and unintelligent to actually achieve anything. Does it seem odd that they would support Il Che, especially after the things that he said about black people, including, and I quote, the blacks, those magnificent examples of the African race who have maintained their racial purity thanks to the lack of an affinity with bathing. And if that's not enough, what about his record with LGBTQ rights? Before the Cuban Revolution, there were indeed strict anti-gay laws in place. But after El Che's rise to power, a massive expansion of those same laws took place. Gays and lesbians were arrested and sent to jail and labor camps. Traits as simple as colorful clothing and long hair on men were enough to tag a person as gay and subsequently to be arrested. I reached out to several Australian-based socialist organizations, including the Socialist Alternative of Melbourne, but received no response. I wanted to get their first-hand view on how they can revere El Che's history. They do not want to come on this podcast for comment. However, some may say that the actions of Olche are less relevant so many years later, and that the idea that a man represents is more important than who he actually was. It's true that a man can be enlightening and inspiration, the idea of a man rather. However, I don't believe that if one day Hitler begins to be a beacon for animals' rights, that as long as he inspires people, we should forget his history. I don't think that that is a safe 
historical precedent to set in place. When we return, we will dive into the centrist conclusion segment of the program. Stick around. Did you know that Front and Center has a daily news podcast? What I'm seeing daily is a satirical daily news podcast that you can listen to in under two minutes from Monday to Friday. It's a quick and funny way to learn about global news, and you can get it every day by subscribing to the Front and Center podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or any other podcasting app. Thank you, and now back to the program. Welcome back to Front and Center. I'm Emilio Garcia. It's time for the Centrist Conclusion segment of the program. El Che Guevara has exactly one positive impact on Cuba, the literacy and education provided to the Cuban people. Apart from that, he was a brutal, idealistic murderer who would seek to advance his mission at any expense. Under his regime, people were executed with no due process, often for small and nonviolent offenses, such as listening to rock music or jazz. It was largely El Che Guevara's influence over Fidel Castro that led them to seize property and control the means of production. Anyone who would claim that El Che was a good man should refer to the letter that he wrote to his dad, where he admits that he finds pleasure in killing. He was a murderous psychopath, and his memory should be met with nothing but disdain. And that's the end of Front and Center. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you to The Unshackled for allowing us to use their platform. If you have any ideas or opinions, please tweet at me at FRNT and Center, or find me on Facebook. I'll read the most interesting comments on the air. Remember to subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Remember, there are always two sides to the story, so keep it central. Thanks for tuning in to Front and Center. Please visit frontandcenter.net.au for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net. And keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.